it's usually a happy new month. Good morning and welcome to the morning crossover on CRBC TV. I'm Duke Emmanuel. Now let me use this opportunity to say good morning to you, Duke Emmanuel, and a happy new month. Sorry about that. Yeah, thank you very much. Good morning to you as well. I mean, it feels, it feels uh, very different. And uh, it, it, I could just feel the awesomeness because you know, December is right here and every December you can just get to small Christmas. It's even more amazing for those of us that stay in Calabar because you know, we don't get to travel, we just have yeah, to stay back travel, here. Yeah, we travel, the festival and every other thing just keeps us here back home. Because it doesn't make sense if you're living where the excitement is to where there's no excitement. I mean, so, uh, welcome to the festive season and I know that you could already smell Christmas because uh, I'm in the car have started rolling out and uh, you know everybody's just talking about it saying the happy new year month and it's the Christmas month mm -hmm. and the uh, last month of the year as well there's a whole lot of significance attached to December all right it's Tuesday and of course every Tuesday we do tourism and culture and of course there is the music to spice up your morning good morning and welcome to good morning crossover my name is Catherine Asukwa. Yeah, she had to do that officially. <laughs> now, on the 1st of December, it's marked worldwide as the World AIDS Day. Mm -hmm. And apparently, it's the first uh, World Global Health Day. I think it was, uh, it kick started in 1988. It's the first ever uh, Global World Health Day because people had to you know, sit back since the dis disease was discovered in uh, 1984. A lot of people died, and four years later, they decided to mark December 1 as mm -hmm. that day mm -hmm. uh, to commemorate those that have passed on from HIV AIDS and also support those that are living with HIV AIDS and create an uh, awareness for those that you know, are, are, are free so that they don't get to contact this particular uh, uh, virus as well. Mm -hmm. So the theme for this year is uh, getting to zero. Getting to zero. Getting to zero. Like zero everything. 20. 30, like everything, zero. Zero discrimination, zero, zero. AIDS related death. Zero, um, zero tolerance and zero stigma. Zero everything. So, um, you could support it. I think right now the uh, work is uh, going on about now. And uh, we'll mention signals from our outside breakfast service. Mainly, uh, we get it, we will relay uh, the work live. So, it, it, it starts from the Millennium Park. And uh, terminates as the botanical, uh, the botanical okay. garden. Now we're having a tongue twisting moment now. Mm, it's <laughs> like Christmas now. Yeah, maybe I need some chicken. It's a month of celebration, so you need some chicken. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, right, right there, the uh, Christmas village will be declared open, and celebration festivity starts right here in Calabar. All right, let us take you through what we have this morning. It was a chat with Saka members, and this um, interview was done by Vicky O'Neill. And of course, a segment on significant of painting during Christmas season and this is done by Cynthia. Now what's the signif um, significance of um, you know, painting? How do you mix different colors and how do you get those beautiful colors to make your room a colorful one? Well, we're on Christmas colors again, white and red. And green. And green as well. Yeah. Okay, because you have to be bright. You and and bright. you notice you that during the festive season everybody just wants to you know, just get prepared to paint the houses and to paint the fences mm -hmm. because, y you know, you don't want your house to look dull when everyone's painting. So, mm -hmm. you notice know, that that goes on. And I think the state government kicks out that. They, they, they start to paint uh, the roads, the, um, the, 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 the roads and all that. And mm -hmm. you, you also have to do that in your own apartment as yeah, well. Yeah, some offices have been painted. Just like ours. Yeah, so um, Cynthia Mbajibu did a report on the significance of painting during the Xmas season, and we'll bring that one to you uh, this morning during the course of the show. The second dry run 2015, you know, the Calabar Carnival that happened. Um, the one that was held on, on Saturday. On Saturday. Yeah, the dry run. I, I, I hear it was, it was uh, lots of fun. I know for those of you that think that uh, the dry run wasn't really caught up, the idea of this dry run is just to cross. And tease and dot the eyes and make sure that the organizers get to see what's going on as they prepare for the big one which is Africa's biggest trade party so mm -hmm. we missed out on the dry run we'll bring you excerpts uh, from that particular uh, amazing event that I held on Saturday and the uh, second dry run for the 2015 Calibre Carnival and we'll also be talking about um, the World It's Day uh, celebration right here on the show this morning during the course of the show. So let's uh, get the ball rolling. It's good morning, cross you on a Tuesday morning, a terrific top notch Tuesday. Stay exactly where you are and let's start your day like this.
Good morning, Crossover Tuesday, and you know Tuesday we talk about culture, we talk about tourism, and today being the very first day in the month of December 2015, you know what that means. First of December is usually set aside for the commemoration of World AIDS Day, and in the States, the celebration will take place. How are we faring in terms of HIV and AIDS awareness? How about stigma and discrimination? And all of that, these and many more are what you will be watching on today's segment. With me to discuss this today's program is the Director General of um, State Agency for the Control of HIV and AIDS in the person of Dr. Mrs. Irene and you. Ma, it's good to have you on our show today. Good morning, Vicky. And very close to Dr. Aniyum is the state coordinator, Green F1, in the person of Mr. Evans Eta. It's good to have you on our show, Mr. Eta. Thank you. Good morning. I'm happy to be here. Without wasting much time, let's look at um, the how are we faring in terms of HIV and AIDS awareness in the states. Dr. Aniyum? Well, in Cross River State, there has been a lot of awareness with the support of partners that we have in the state, with the support of the state government, and with the support of local government. We have um, 420 interpersonal communication conductors spread across the state. These are young people who are domiciled in the local government and who are versed in everything concerning the local government. They go around talking to people about HIV awareness. Many of them have even been trained on HIV counseling and testing and in making referrals. Our partners have also supported us in the creation of lots of IC materials. We've talked to so many people. We have uh, faith-based organizations, the churches, and the mosque. We have the Muslim community. So a lot of awareness has gone around. Okay, in the absence of the, this partner you have mentioned, what is the sustainability of HIV in Cross River States? A lot of efforts have been put into this. Government will now take over the support of HIV and AIDS in the state because we have a level playing field in Cross River State. We've always had political strong will. The political will in the state has also always been strong. We have partners who are ever willing to come into the state and the ones who were here have trained the partners in the state, the government, on what to do. So government is now going to take over the support of the service delivery points which have been spread across the state. Before 2005, there was no service delivery points, but now we have several spread across the state. We have prevention of mother to child treatment sites, 525 across the state. The state has been saturated with services. What we now need is for everybody's hand to be on ground because this virus is no respect of persons. All right, thank you very much, Ma. To Mr. Etta, the state coordinator of uh, CRINEP1, can you tell us in your own sector, uh, in terms of uh, stigma and uh, discrimination, how have we fared? Yeah, thank you very much. We are all aware that uh, stigma, stigma now is of the mind. Why I'm saying stigma is of the mind is knowing the partners you are working with, knowing who you are contacting, knowing the connections you are making. We are aware that people don't stigmatize HIV, but poverty. That is what we are trying to fight. Let them see HIV as ordinary sickness and ordinary virus. I know from the inception there was an attack, attack given to HIV. 
which is a dead cause. That is why people are still looking at that. If somebody is infected, people are looking at you as a dead cause. People that are infected are doing their normal business. They are going out, doing every activity, even better than people that, are, people that have hypertensive, people that have uh, diabetes and others. For us, in that network, we encourage our people. A lot of coordinators, they have their ex team that even if they are positive, they are going to live their normal life and continue with their life. You see, if you go to our facilities, you see couples that are married, they have negative children. You see, uh, uh, discovered couples spread across the country. Neither the male is infected or the female is infected. The children are not infected. It is because of the awareness that is being spread out. We, we advocate that everybody should be in that shoe to know that stigma at the point will be over. Okay, in terms of um, people who are positive, you know, a lot of people think because they are positive they will still hide and not come out. How has it been? Are people coming out to own up, to share that they are positive or they are still hiding somewhere and thinking that if they come out, uh, people will stigmatize them or look at them as being inferior in your own area? I, as I earlier said, I said we have a lot of sprawling support group, more than 120 in the state. And uh, anybody that has identified himself to register in a support group has been able to overcome stigma. Those people that are seen behind, maybe I felt stigma. A little bit backward is in our local areas where instead of them going to the facilities to accept drugs, they prefer going to a distance area. We are advocating that they should overcome that. Because without overcoming that, you will still be hiding from it and it will cause you to die. Because there are a lot of things you are supposed to learn in your support group meetings, how to add health to your drugs, the time you are supposed to take your drugs, the time you are supposed to, the type of food you are supposed to eat, to keep you alive. The awareness creation is the best thing. If you are hiding from your share, come out. Know what is good. It will leave you long. People that are living with HIV and AIDS are going out doing their normal business having negative children, producing, having a lot, I can't mention here. Uh, I think it is even better for them to go to the local areas to identify with the support group than to just stay and remain, nobody would know, they are just there, they are not taking their medication, you know, it is even better than hiding themselves. Okay, Ma, before now, the prevalence in the states was um, 7.1. How are we faring now? We are still working with 7.1, and we know what 7.1 percent connotes. It means that if you line up a hundred people in this compound, seven out of that hundred are HIV positive. That's a lot of persons in any community. Uh, people who stigmatize others, most of them have not undergone HIV tests. Because if you see that 7 out of 100 are positive, then the likelihood of so many people being positive is there. So what we advocate for is that everybody should have an HIV test. Thereafter, you may feel you can stigmatize. Okay. Now, the, the celebration is going to take place today. What are the plans on ground? The plans on ground is before 7 a.m. we shall be at the Millennium Park Calabar to take a walk to the Botanical Garden. Thereafter, the programs are set out. There will be speeches, there will be drama, and there will be a lot of IC materials to be given out. How about tests? Oh, there will be lots of tests. <laughs> lots of HIV counseling and testing. So everybody's invited. Come out and know your status. It's safer to do that. Okay, for this year's theme, what is it all about? This year's theme is zero new infections, zero AIDS related deaths, zero stigma and discrimination. 
with a sub theme of ending AIDS by 2030. What do we mean by that? We mean that by 2030, there will be no new infections at all. 2030, we will not be talking about AIDS-related deaths. 2030, we hope not to have any more stigma and discrimination. 2030, everything has to be zero. Yeah. Okay. Um, what is your general perception about people and HIV? Uh, the general perception we have is that a lot of people have a holier than thou attitude. They believe that it is basically the lots of those who are promiscuous. I don't think so. There are so many factors that cause HIV. People so get some from using of unsterilized instruments, some through sexual relationships. A test we carried out a short while ago was called mode of transmission study. And the result was that more than 60% of those who have HIV are those in seemingly stable relationships, mainly married people, because a faithful partner may be married to an unfaithful partner. So the other one would bring in HIV into the home. We also have a population known as the most at risk population. Some of these people are homosexuals. You know, some are injecting drug users. This population spread HIV very, very fast. And we have a lot of them amongst us. So what we would ask again is that everybody should play responsibly. Thank you very much, mm. ma'am. Uh, Ms. Taita, what are your expectations for this year's celebration of um, World AIDS Day? Yeah. Uh, expectations are that uh, for now we don't need sympathy for people that are infected. We need empathy. We need care and support from the government. We need nutritional support. We need integration of services in our facilities. If these expectations are met, people infected will be going out with their normal activities and carry out and know that they belong in a particular state or country. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tata. To you, Ma, uh, do we have any success stories as uh, regards the uh, prevention of mother to child transmission of um, HIV and AIDS in the state? And how many mothers have delivered their babies who are a negative? Do you have any success story? We have several success stories. I may not have the actual number now, but we have uh, 525 prevention of mother to child transmission sites spread across the state. And for every pregnant woman who accesses those services, their babies are born free of HIV. And those are success stories. And we have uh, stories about a brother that was filled with uh, female sex workers. One of our partners decided to integrate services among them, train them on income generating activities. As we are talking, the brother was closed down and those women are amongst us working, doing paid jobs and taking care of themselves. So what are your expectations? Expectations, there will be more services. More babies are going to be born free of HIV. And when we have all babies born free of HIV, then we can start thinking of and planning for an HIV-free generation. And then we can say we, we are no longer talking of PMTCT, but EMTCT, which is elimination of mother-to-child transmission. It's happening in other countries. We can do it. I believe we can beat HIV. This is a country that uh, stopped Ebola. If we could do it concerning Ebola, we can do it. We have pastors, we have imams, we have 
mothers, we have fathers, we have friends. So let all our hands be on deck to ensure that HIV is wiped out of the state. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Moses Irene Aniyun, the Director General, State Agency for the Control of HIV and AIDS, for being part of our program today. Thank you. And to Mr. Ivan Eta, the State Coordinator, Green F1, for being part of our program today. Thank you. Thank you so much, viewers, for being part of our program. Thank you. We hope we have educated you on this year's celebration of um, World AIDS Day. Remember, there will be free vaccine outside there. So go and get yourself tested. I am Vicky O'Neill. Thank you for being there. Welcome to Good Morning Fresh Rivers Tuesday. And on Tuesday, we talk entertainment, tourism, culture, creativity, and all. Today, we're we'll talking about painting, how people and why people decorate and paint their homes during Christmas. Because I've been seeing lately offices, fast food homes are being painted in preparation for this Christmas season. I'd like to know why people paint their homes during Christmas season. Join me as we go to the streets to ask people why. They paint their homes during Christmas season. Um, Christmas is a celebration period. The decoration and there's a certain color that indicates uh, Christmas. So we have to put on those colors. Okay. Christmas tree, possibly. So. You know, during Christmas is a time of, uh, we say, where people celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. So it is necessary for people to paint their houses so as to improve the uh, quality of the state, to improve the quality of the house and also make the place look on GC for people also and attract visitors to come and have their educational leisure time there. So it is necessary for people to paint their houses for us to attract people. Painting is a form of adornment. So I know Christmas season is a ceremonial period. So it's when you will be visiting a lot of people and a lot of people will be coming to your houses. Yes. So it's important just to make your house look nice. Okay. So that when they come, they'll just see the beauty. Yes. It's, it's just fun to you know, make your place neat. Yes. There are a lot of reasons depending on the individual. But I think one vivid and obvious reason is to um, respect the season, okay. which is Christmas. And also, it's a form of thanksgiving, you know, to um, psychologically appreciate God for what He has done during the year. And also, it's a show of um, achievement and relevance. So I think so. those are some of the key reasons why people spend their houses. And also, some persons spend their houses, you know, to make it look attractive and because of uh, guests that might be coming from near and far. So I think those are some of, the, some, of our, some of the key reasons why people spend their houses. When it comes to the festive period, it's all about anxiety, happiness. And when it comes to a season like this, this was the season when Christ himself was born. That is where you find a lot of homes being cleaned up, everywhere being tidied and to enjoy, to crown it all, to paint it brings beauty when it comes to the festivity of the uh, place or the season. To purify their homes against a festive time, sometimes when some, uh, they get a marriage, they would like to paint the house so that their house will be looking good. As a, our state implies, yes. or Calabar in particular implies, it's a, a decent environment right okay. from the origin. The state is a tourist area and also it's an example to other states. When you come to view, you can also compare that to other states outside. Our state is a decent area and we try to maintain that culture. Mm? That culture of decency. But I want to really know that at least uh, uh, Grand River State or Calabar in particular is a decent environment. I think it is necessary because uh, Christmas is a period of celebration and beauty goes with celebration and people really seem to beautify their environment by painting their own houses or those paints that has already worn out so that the place will look beautiful and in Cross River State where tourism is one of the states yes carnival and we expect a lot of visitors from outside nobody really wants to see his or her house started yes uh -huh. so that's one of the major reasons why people struggle by all means 
to paint their houses this season. Basically, it's very, very necessary. You know, Calabar for the past uh, years, from 1999, when Governor Donald came, uh, this will this will look at to because this is almost to December. So, so basically, every place is looking very, very neatly to the Calabar Carnival and uh, the uh, Christmas itself. It's necessary for people to paint their houses during the evening because this is the Georgia season. It's something that everybody will want to celebrate the day of Christ. So you need to keep your environment clean. Your house is particular, particular has to be clean because you might have visitors from maybe your people can travel down from where they are to come and visit you during this Christmas. So that's why you need to keep your house clean so that if people come to your house, they will now know that you are somebody that can, you know, arrange very well. The reason that it is very necessary for people to paint their houses this time, I think because it is a ceremonial time, which is December. And when people work from January up to December, at least they need to renew things and put more things to it. So, and being a ceremonial period, I want to believe that most of the people will have visitors that will visit them. And they want to be sure they furnish the house, paint it, at least decorate it, so that whenever their visitor comes, they will also enjoy the environment with them. I think that should be one of the reasons. Very, very, if you come now, you'll be amazed to see I painted it very fine with decoration. Because well, it's kind of celebration for most people that rather paint their house. So friends, now this is the this is the first step. Uh, tourism uh, tested. So because of uh, uh, people like to paint house now, um, because of this, uh, this are for to paint house. This is uh, uh, December time. Uh, people like to paint the house. But this time around, people complain there is no money to paint the house. Eh? So because of that, uh, the market is not moving as it used to move before. Yeah, there's no money this time around. Mm, within that past years, by this time, people will be busy coming to buy the fence and paint everywhere. But up to now, the market still remains as it remained before. Okay, so sir, what you're trying to say is that there's no difference in sales? Uh, for now, there's no difference. Up to now. Anybody who maybe don't have the money will not paint. Okay. Only have your money, that's where you can attract you to paint. It's still good money for Shiva Tuesday. We have heard from people from the streets and also a paint seller. He has told us why it is necessary to paint your home during Christmas season. We also have to help complement Calabar. Calabar, as you well know, is green and clean. And to complement what the governor has been doing so far, everybody has to make attempts to make their surroundings and homes beautiful for the carnival and also to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned as I take you back to the studio for the remains of Good Morning Festival Tuesday. Today, too many special new things are happening. First, we have a brand new cabinet. Second, the team has been unveiled. The carnival team for 2015 has been unveiled. I believe His Excellency, the Governor, when he's cutting this tape again, will tell us the reason behind this team. Teams are actually guiding principles and philosophies that guide the carnival of a given year. Bands are meant to dance to interpret the teams. It is on this note that I call His Excellency to do what he knows how to do best for the show to begin. Your Excellency, sir. We are here once again to do a second dry run of the carnival. The first time while we were here, we had just to try. There was no team. This time around, the team has been unveiled, and the theme for this year's carnival is climate change. Climate change. You all know that climate change is the talk of the of the of the world now. Looking for ways and means to ensure mitigation of the climate, which is changing because of the fast depleting ozone layer. 
and so we'll be trying to see various ways in minimizing this scourge to ensure that the world stays safe, that we keep the sea levels that are rising low so as to reduce incidences of flooding and um, that also we mitigate the effects of climate changes here and there in terms of weather which is getting harsh and harsh in the drier areas. It's on that note as the banks will try to also reveal and uh, demonstrate this that I will flag up a second dry run in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost.
All right, this is how we end today's show, which is Tuesday. And of course, don't forget, it's first December and it is the World AIDS Day. The team is getting to zero. All right, all we have to do is share love. Show love is a, is a month of love. So don't forget everything you have to do. Make sure you do it right. Like I always say, start your day with God and every other thing will be put in place. My name is Catherine Asuko. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.